Princess Cruz's newest ship, Sun Princess, has just set sail, and already some of the loyal Princess Cruisers are complaining about this new mega ship. Are these complaints justified? Well, we've just returned from one of the first sailings on this ship and share our honest review of where Sun Princess shines and where the ship falls short. Up next. Welcome aboard, cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. And we're going to dive right into this review of our first impressions of Sun Princess. Even though we've seen some negative reviews on the boards and in social media, one area of Sun Princess we don't think anyone can complain about are the new standard balcony cabins. In fact, Princess Cruises has finally listened to its loyal cruisers as all the entry-level balcony cabins are now deluxe balcony cabins, which means more storage, a sofa, and you can say goodbye to that awful shower curtain in the bathroom. We appreciated the new layout and decor, which puts a cabin on par with similar staterooms on other mega ships like Celebrity Ascent or Norwegian Prima. This does mean that there is no longer a walk-in closet in the balcony cabins on Sun Princess, which we did benefit from as overpackers. Still, the new closet design on Sun Princess provides enough storage with a combination of shelves, drawers, and a closed bar. These cabins also have a new and improved bathroom with modern finishes and a brand new shower design. This square shower setup features a glass door and also features marble finishes and premium bath products, including liquid hand soap, which for us is a big improvement. The only odd feature was that the bath towels were actually stored under the sink and behind the shower door, which made it a little difficult if you forgot to put a bath towel out before you hopped in the shower. Inside the stateroom, the muted color palette and light wood tones complemented the upscale decor found around the rest of the ship, and the signature princess luxury bed provided all the comforts of home. Not to mention, there's also a new dry bar hair dryer in all cabins, which apparently women love. Overall, the 236 square foot cabin had all the features and amenities you would expect to find in any modern cruise ship cabin. There's also several power connections throughout the cabin. In fact, there are USB-A, USB-C, and power outlet on each side of the bed, which is more than we've seen on any cruise ship. A similar setup exists at the desk as well. So we were pleasantly surprised by our accommodation for this Mediterranean cruise. Sun Princess is part of the new Sphere class, and for this class of ship, Princess Cruises completely redesigned the Piazza. And while some Princess Cruisers are disappointed, this new setup of the Piazza accomplishes several things. First of all, the new nine-story sphere in the ship center allows for more natural light and creates a more inviting Piazza. Now the Piazza has moved up a deck. It's now on decks seven, eight, and nine on Sun Princess but it still, it feels more spacious and warm. The floor to ceiling glass from the sphere offers amazing ocean views on all three decks, and it even includes a sea walk on deck nine on the starboard side. Popular venues like the Kroonas Bar and Bellini's offer seating around the piazza, so it's almost like having al fresco seating for an interior deck. Plus, the International Cafe and Alfredo's Pizzeria seamlessly blend into this central hub of activity. Further, the new Piazza still features several events, parties, and live music throughout the cruise. With the terrace seats, there are decent sight lines on all three decks. So cruisers can now enjoy activities like the 80s parties, rock parties, or other Piazza entertainment from all angles. Yet those just walking through from one end of the ship to the other can still bypass the crowds. That is, if they're not sucked into the fun happening down on deck seven. The rest of the ship continues the trend with light beach tones and soft materials in the public spaces. This design aesthetic offers upscale finishes with a clean and minimalistic modern decor, which is a similar design aesthetic you see on modern mega ships, again like the Edge class from Celebrity Cruises or the Prima class from Norwegian Cruise Line. The design though isn't stale or hospital-like. We feel that Sun Princess feels very homey. For example, Princess Live has some natural light coming in with colorful chairs that make it feel homier than its counterparts on the royal class of ships. And then there's the shops, which has walkways paved with marble, literally, which reflects the light for a more luxurious feel. This is in contrast to many other ships in the Princess Cruises fleet, which feature dark woods 
and tacky accents reminiscent of your grandmother's house. While the piazza and overall decor and ambiance of Sun Princess is certainly elevated, navigating Sun Princess still took some getting used to. We're used to sailing on mega ships that allow you to walk from one end of the ship all the way to the other. Cruise lines like Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruises design ships that on most passenger decks you can walk from the aft of the ship to the forward on either the starboard side or the port side or just right through the middle of the ship. However, it's similar to other Princess Cruises ships. There are very few decks where cruisers on Sun Princess can walk from one end to the other on both sides of the ship. On deck seven and eight, cruisers can only move from midship to aft on the starboard side of the ship. To access the deck six restaurant, cruisers need to use the aft elevators and stairwells. Finding some locations on Sun Princess can also be tricky. For instance, Good Spirits on deck seven is tucked behind the forward elevators. If it wasn't for the sign on the wall, you could completely miss this popular venue. Likewise, the new Teppanyaki restaurant is oddly situated on deck eight, next to the midship elevators. This restaurant's actually off the port side of that deck, which again has no walkways. So you could miss the restaurant completely. Finding the main entrance to the sanctuary on deck 18 also takes some maneuvering. You can't get there from midship on deck 18 or on deck 17. So you must head aft on deck 16 or lower and walk all the way aft and use that walkway or elevators to reach the entrance. Likewise, the soon to be Love by Brito restaurant is located aft at the end of a hallway of staterooms on deck 17. With the main entrance on the port side, we almost got a little lost trying to find this venue. We could go on, but you do get the general sense that navigating Sun Princess is a little more complex than we'd like it to be. Especially given that this was a brand new class of ship, we thought Princess Cruises could have done a little bit better with the layout. Overall, we think that complimentary dining on Princess Cruises is pretty average. However, we are big fans of the specialty dining and we're happy to report the specialty dining on Sun Princess was fantastic. Princess Cruises Crown Grill is one of the best steakhouses at sea, so we're happy to report that venue's back on Sun Princess with an elevated design and decor, but the same great menu. There's also the Catch by Rudy, a seafood restaurant concept that Princess Cruises launched in 2022. The fan favorite Sabatini's Italian restaurant also makes an appearance on Sun Princess with a beautiful redesign. However, Sun Princess welcomed several new dining concepts to the fleet. We tested two of them and think they're great additions to the dining lineup. While not new to cruise ships, Yumi Teppanyaki is new to Princess Cruises. As fans of these Japanese style steakhouses, we can confirm that this version at sea is just as delicious and entertaining. Offering a four course menu with plenty of utensil spinning, sizzling, and singing, this Deck 8 restaurant is a perfect addition this family-focused megaship. What's unique is that Yumi also features a hot pot experience. With six tables lining the venue, this cooking approach allows guests to prepare their own Asian-inspired delicacies. With boiling broth, cruisers combine veggies, meat, and noodles for a filling and fun communal meal. Our friends vouch that it was top-notch. On deck nine, aft is the Butcher's Block by Dario. In partnership with the world's most famous butcher, this family style feast is a carnivore's dream. The eight course meal features several signature cuts of beef, including a tender and delicious tomahawk and a T-bone. There's also a vegetarian option, but everyone gets a slice of the light and airy olive oil cake for dessert. While I did enjoy this meal, it was almost too much meat focused, even for me. I would have appreciated one or two more courses from the vegetarian menu that Heidi had to break it up a bit. On Sun Princess, all specialty dining is $45 a person and $22.50 for kids under 12. Cruisers with the Princess Premier Package can redeem specialty restaurant credits at all of the specialty restaurants. Like any specialty restaurant, we highly suggest making reservations pre-cruise so you don't miss out. Now, while we did love the dining at the new specialty restaurants, we were surprised at the location of two of them. At the back of the new buffet on Deck 9, the Eatery, there are two specialty restaurants, the Catch by Rudy and the new Butcher's Block by Dario. While the food is great, the ambiance here is very disappointing. In fact, both restaurants actually serve as overflow seating for the eatery for breakfast and lunch. While the Catch on the starboard side has a blue color palette, 
which is distinct from the red color palette of the butcher's block on the port side, these venues did not feel upscale or intimate. This is in contrast to other cruise ships in the fleet, where the catch is located off the piazza and is a well-themed and elegant restaurant. Likewise, the butcher's block concept is about a shared dining experience, but given that this is an extension of the buffet, it loses much of the closeness it aims to achieve, a better seating arrangement for this restaurant would resemble a home-style kitchen. Honestly, it almost feels like these restaurants were an afterthought on Sun Princess. One dining venue we know wasn't an afterthought, in fact was very intentionally designed for Sun Princess, is the three-story main dining room. All Princess cruise ships boast several complimentary main dining rooms. However, Princess Cruises reimagined this dining experience on Sun Princess with the new Horizons dining room. Despite what Princess Cruisers might say, we are fans of this new layout spanning three decks with stunning aft views and a three-story sculpture. Aside from the dining rooms being combined into one multi-story venue on Sun Princess, each deck does offer a different dining setup. The two-story Horizons restaurant is located on decks six and seven. This terraced main dining room is more grand and offers fantastic wake views. While slightly different on each deck, the furnishings and decor make this feel more elegant than the counterparts on other Princess Cruises ships. The largest of the three dining rooms is found on deck six, and this restaurant is reserved for guests who prefer traditional dining. The dining times on our 10 night Mediterranean cruise was the first seating at 5 p.m. with a second seating at 7.30 p.m. Guests can also opt for more flexible dining where they can make reservations in the app between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. These guests will be seated on deck seven of the Horizons dining room. Regardless of whether you choose traditional or flexible dining, guests can enjoy the same new main dining room menus from the cruise line's new chief culinary officer, Rudy Sodomon. On deck eight, there is the Americana Diner, a new concept for Princess Cruises. This casual restaurant has an entirely new all-day menu. Open for brunch and dinner every day, the Americana Diner serves all-day breakfast. The menu also features classic comfort food like ribs, chicken wings, and sandwiches. You won't want to miss the chicken and waffles cocktail here either. While we only dined once in Horizons and once in the Americana Diner, we can see how the variety of dining options appeals to all types of cruisers. And Heidi is definitely a fan of the all-day breakfast. One of the common critiques we hear about this ship is that it's just too big. Now, of course, we sail on mega ships and have sailed on the world's largest ships. And Sun Princess is big, but in our experience, it handled the crowds extremely well. The ship was sailing at essentially double occupancy, but we never experienced any overly busy areas or extreme crowding. And this might be due to a couple reasons. For one, Sun Princess has smart elevators, which you don't always find in ships of this size. Like many hotels on land, with this technology, guests select a floor and get assigned to an elevator. Once that elevator arrives, you simply hop on and it will stop at your designated location. While cruise ships have just started introducing this technology, in our experiences, it has been hit or miss. We first experienced smart elevators on a cruise during our MSC Seascape sailing on December 2022. And let's just say they were anything but smart. However, during a recent sailing on Icon of the Seas, the elevators worked perfectly. Happily, we can report that we had a similar experience on Sun Princess. These elevators were fast and efficient. Regardless of where we were heading, we never had to wait long for a lift. We never had any issues securing an elevator up to the pool decks or down to the piazza from our deck 14 cabin, even on disembarkation morning. Likewise, at night, an elevator back to our room from the piazza never took too long to arrive either. There was only one instance in which an elevator arrived already too full for us to get in. Along with the elevators, there's several outdoor spaces that disperse the crowds very well. While Sun Princess introduces more light into its indoor spaces, the outdoor spaces shine as well. They're open, elegant, and provide great views from several angles. Aft on deck 18 is the sanctuary. This private sun deck is open to those in the signature collection suites. Cruisers can also purchase day passes or get a discount when purchasing for the entire length of the cruise. Prices start at $79 a day for a port day, which includes access to the deck and an exclusive lunch menu. 
it's the first sanctuary in the Princess Cruises fleet to offer a pool, in addition to plenty of loungers, oversized chairs, and fantastic views overlooking the ship's wake. There's also a private bar along with first class service. However, a close second for us is the Sea View Terrace located on deck 17 forward outside of the dome. With whirlpools, an indoor outdoor pool, several comfy loungers, and a bar, this two story lounge space is certainly a tranquil retreat. It offers great forward facing views with access to fresh air in a partially protected space. Given it's entirely free and not far from the new Lido dining options, it's a nice departure from the main pool deck. Sun Princess also enhanced the outdoor spaces with the addition of the Deck 9 Promenade. Wrapping around the back of the ship, this outdoor space has a variety of seating options. There's also several eateries and bars just a short walk away. These include the Eatery Buffet, where guests are now served all their selections, plus the popular International Cafe, Alfredo's Pizzeria, and even new quick service food stations on the actual promenade. Down one deck, the Wakeview Infinity Pool and Bar have a chill yacht club vibe and unspoiled views and is open to cruisers of all ages. All cruise lines are introducing exclusive intimate onboard activities. Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas has the Empire Supper Club and Princess Cruises offers the unique 360 and extraordinary experience on Discovery Princess and Enchanted Princess. New for Sun Princess is the magical Spellbound. In partnership with Magic Castle, this immersive and mystifying evening is open to only 90 guests each night. The experience includes a special dinner in a reserved section of the main dining room and an entrance through the oddly out of place black door found midship on deck eight. We won't spoil any of the fun in this review, but behind that innocent looking door is perhaps one of the best theme interactive experiences at sea. Spellbound's level of immersion, attention to detail, and storytelling rivals any Disney attraction on land or at sea. With a backstory tied to the actual Magic Castle in LA, an evening at Spellbound includes unique cocktails, illusions, sleight of hand, and even a potential ghost sighting. The attention to detail is remarkable, with the room itself coming to life. Not to mention some of the best cocktails on the ship can be found only at the Parlor Bar in Spellbound. All this magic and mystery does cost $149 per person. But given that cruisers can come and go from the venue for the entire night, it's well worth the price tag in our opinion. Earlier we mentioned one of the things we didn't like about Sun Princess was navigating the ship. Now one point we didn't make was that to get from midship on deck 8 to the Princess Arena, cruisers must walk through the casino. And you might be saying, well that's not a big deal. On several cruise ships you need to walk through the casino to get to other public areas. Well, even though this is a brand new ship, the casino on Sun Princess is not smoke free. The casino on Sun Princess is the largest in the fleet. And to enhance this Vegas feel, the height of the ceilings in this Deck 8 venue are taller, reaching over 10 feet. This extra vertical space makes the casino feel larger and more glamorous than a typical casino on other cruise ships. But we were completely surprised that the casino allowed smoking. Although the ship has only been sailing for a few weeks, the smoke smell is already apparent. This is true even outside the casino itself, especially in the forward elevator bank. We aren't sure if this has something to do with the increased ceiling height, but it was a huge turnoff for us non-smokers. So while we do agree with some of the critiques that Princess Cruisers have made about this new ship, we think many of them are overstating the facts. Sun Princess is a gorgeous mega ship that offers many of the signature Princess Cruises experience with just a little bit more upscale feel. However, we need to admit that we were only on board for five days. So there was only so much we could fit in and still fit into our clothes. So there are several eateries that we did not get to test out during our cruise, including one of our personal favorites, Alfredo's Pizzeria. We only ate in the eatery one day as well, so we couldn't really test out all the buffet options. Further, given the ship's delivery was delayed, some onboard experiences were not available yet. Unfortunately, we were not able to see any of the new production shows in either the transformational Princess Arena 
or the Dome. The first show, Valora, A Pirate's Quest, is set to debut in the Princess Arena in the coming weeks. The remaining new shows and reimagined Princess favorites will be rolling out over the next four months. Similarly, the Cirque LOE shows in the Dome are still in rehearsals. Likewise, the Park 19 attractions aimed at families are still awaiting certifications. These include the Nets Ropes Course, the Sea Breeze Roll Glider, the Splash Pad, and the Coastal Climb. These onboard attractions will open in the coming weeks. We have to admit that we were a bit disappointed that we couldn't experience these attractions to see how they compare to the competitors. Finally, as the weather warms and more families hop on board, it remains to be seen how Sun Princess will handle the summer vacation crowds. As I mentioned during our sailing, the several sun decks were never all that busy. Even with a few sunny and warm days, there were plenty of prime loungers near the several different pool areas. Likewise, we never had any issues with long waits for dining or at the bars to get a drink. We were able to get seats or prime standing locations for the nightlife in the piazza as well. Hopefully, with more cruisers on board, the ship's approximately 850 capacity Princess Arena and the 250 capacity The Dome will handle the crowds for the signature performances. We will admit that Sun Princess does differ from other Princess Cruises ships, but it should feel pretty familiar to loyal Princess guests, just bigger with some new amenities. For us, this modern and elevated new ship is a welcome addition to the fleet, and we appreciate most of the updates. Now, after watching this video, we suspect you want to book a cruise on Sun Princess, but before you do anything, you need to check out our 25 expert Princess Cruises tips and tricks video right here on YouTube. In that video, we give you insider tips on everything from booking your cruise, how to navigate the Medallion app and the Medallion technology, as well as packing tips, tips for saving money, and how to make the most out of your trip. That way, your Sun Princess Cruise is smooth sailing.